trap house podcast thanks everyone for joining us today got uh two two guests on today we got kent wild and brian nelson they're involved with the nta the national traverse association big convention coming up in lima ohio the national convention so we're going to dive in talk about all the little details and everything that's going on there and um while i'm thinking about it too uh there also might be some live music i, I have another podcast i do with a bunch of different music and I think we're going to bring some music to the NTA on a Saturday night. So uh, that's still all in the works. Um, so, but more details to come on that. And do want to just put that out there for you. But uh, lots happening. We just got back from the FTA in Kansas. And we're looking here. It's coming up real soon. So uh, it won't be long. Another month or so we'll be there in Ohio. So uh, before we talk to Kent and Brian, I do want to say thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing the podcast. It's growing. Uh, we're getting more active, getting closer to season. Convention season is always a great time. Like I get, once I go walk into those fairgrounds, you start smelling baits and lures and seeing old friends and old faces and making new friends. Um, yeah, you just get pumped up. You're already ready. It's already, it's hotter than blazes out, but you're still pumped up to go trap some coyotes or something just because of the smell and the atmosphere. But uh, so if you can make it great, uh, if not, plan on it in the future. Make it work. Get get out there. It's always a great time. Uh, I do. We do got to give it up for all the sponsors. We have Weeby Knives. Check out their website. Uh, Mark Steck has a great line of product there. Uh, several different knives, knives to choose from, from fleshing, the skinning knives, pelting knives, that sort of thing. So WeebyKnives.com. Check it out. Also, Jeff Haggerty, maker of the Hags Bracket. That's j3o.com. Check out his website. Great American-made products there. Uh, Jeff's a great guy. I can't say enough good about him. And then we have Top Lot Stretcher Company. Their website is toplotstretcherco.com. Uh, check them out. Leon's got some good stuff, too, as well as trapping supplies. And like always, I always mention the adjustable first stretchers. I was able to talk to him in the FTA. He'll be at the NTA as well. And uh, I think we're going to have him on the show in the future, uh, maybe talking about those stretchers and trapping in general. So keep a lookout for that. And uh, last but not least, who's your trapper supply? Without Charlie and everything he's done, this podcast would not be happening. He does a lot for trappers. He does a lot for me. Uh, one of the most honest guys I've ever met. So <laughs> uh, Charlie's a good one. So check us out, who's your trapper supply.com. We got our top dog bait, uh, the jet fuel lure. Uh, along we got packages, supplies, sifters, baskets, the whole deal. We're getting pumped up. Uh, season's coming, so we're we're already in the process of uh, stocking the shelves. So, and uh, I think that covers it. Let's go talk to the guys and see what they got to say about the NTA. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for a Trap House podcast. We have two guests today, including Charlie, as always. Uh, we're going to talk about the National Trappers Association. We have Kent Wild and Brian Nelson with us, um, two of the guys that have been working hard behind the scenes with a lot of it, and we're just going to talk about several topics. So uh, where should we even begin with this? This is a multi-person podcast. <laughs> so I, well, we're, we're talking primarily about the NTA, upcoming NTA convention, which is the last weekend of, well, what, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday of uh, last, last of July. Brian, what's the dates, Brian? 28th, 29th, and 30th. Okay. Of July. Yeah. Which is kind of the classic weekend for the NTA, although it does vary some, but that is an, a common weekend for the NTA. But. Right. And it's in Ohio, Lima, Ohio, which has been there before. Uh, yep. This is the third time, at least. Yes. I think it, it, I think it, it, oh, no, it might not be in Lima. It's been there in Ohio four times in recent memory. yeah, but maybe not all in Lima. Uh, Kent, you might want to turn your mic up a little bit or I set back sit, a little bit. Sit closer. <laughs> so what can, what can we expect for this convention? Is it going to be a little bit different of how we've done things in the past or I know there's several different things kind of going on. Yeah, we've got a couple new things. Uh, this will be the second year for the kids cave and I'll let 
Kent talk about that. That's his baby. Um, with this new this year, the, we've got some ladies that have put together what they call the She Side, which will be a, a basically a complete program for four women by women. Cool. Uh, that'll, be that'll be demos. <laughs> that'll be demos and workshops, and it's a pretty nice list. Yeah, I'm, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll put that up there. She Side. <laughs> So is that is that all trapping related, Brian, or is that other other subjects as well? It's it's mostly trapping related. Um, the demos they've got land trapping, water trapping, uh, sewing with fur, um, skinning demonstrations. So it's it's mostly trapping related. Yeah, that's great uh, to see uh, ladies get you know. Some recognition there's been always a lot of it seems like the female trapping community is on the rise over the past 10 years it's definitely becoming more and more popular uh, amongst the ladies and that's what we need that's great you know yeah you guys see that in your business some uh certainly more now than there was 10 years ago that is true um obviously there's still a percentage of women is much pretty small um as compared to you know men traditionally but um but yeah you definitely there are definitely women out there that that um their husbands may not even trap or they're you know they're interested they're interested on their own so we have one uh she comes in the shop and her husband is um not even really for it you know he's <laughs> he let's say he's not supportive of the, her trapping interest so <laughs> well that's too bad yeah <laughs> although i guess to flip that there's a number of men that women are not particularly supportive of the trapping interest of their husbands either so <laughs> this is true but we're used to that <laughs> so so um brian you want to um what else, what else are some of the things that the convention offers? I mean, whether, you know, stuff that they, you guys all, that, you know, that you always do versus some of the other things. Yeah, we've got, you know, we've got a traditional demo lineup. There's all three days, there's a full demo schedule. Um, everything from mink to coyotes and everything in between. Uh, tailgaters, of course, we've got over a hundred inside vendors registered already so friday night we've got the president's dinner which is a little new they did that last year this will be the first this will be the second year where the it's a it's open to it's free to members and their spouse and up to three kids eat free uh, barbecue dinner friday night and then after each kid after that i think is six dollars if you've got more than that or if you're not a <laughs> member <it's> twelve dollars <laughs> Yeah, they did that. They did that. They got rid of the member. I don't know, if folks. Some folks will know this. Some folks won't. But there used to be, a, there used to be members only demos every day. Right. It was kind of a way of rewarding, you know, members for um, for being part of the NTA. And the decision was to get rid of that so that it'd be open to all people. And in return for that, they did this president's reception. Okay. To also try to, you know, get people together and thank folks for, you know, being a NTA member. Sure. I mean, that makes sense. And I, that, the, the member only demo thing was a bit, I mean, you heard both sides of that for sure, you know, so <laughs> without, you know, without getting into the weeds too much on that. But. I, I will say that I sat, uh, you know, because they have to have people there. At each one of these, especially a member, you know, the, the demos, members only demos. And I sat at the table uh, for several years. And to be honest, I never had anybody complain. Mm -hmm. Once they once they set it up that they could that people could join there rather than having to go back, you know, to the main building and missing seeing the demo. Right. So, you know, people would join and there there wasn't really a whole lot of fuss about it. Right. That I heard, but it just stuck in some people's craw. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we could all get on the soapbox about there being a couple hundred thousand trappers in the U.S. We've got 
what five 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 percent are members of an association right. you know and and somebody's going to complain about being you know <laughs> they're not they're not a member and they can't go to a demo it's like you know i think mean, i mean. you know. and you know you talk about that and how many people are members of how much cross pollination is that i mean i'm a member of ita i'm a member of the Illinois Traffic Association. I'm a member of, of you know, or, or, uh, FTA. I'm a member of NTA. I'm a life member of Ohio. I mean, how many of us are, are belong to multiple different organizations? Right. So right. That, even, that even cuts the actual number of the individuals down farther. Right. That's sad. And I don't, I, you know, and, and, um, Lots of people have been scratching their head over this and how to reach out further. And I know trappers definitely have that independent streak to them that, you know, but I, other organizations face the same problem um, for sure. But I don't know that um, trappers might be one of the more challenging ones to, to garner new members considering the percentage of, um, yeah. act, you know, active members. So. I don't know what the answer is either. I mean, you look at like Whitetails Unlimited and they have a, I, I mean, somebody was telling me something like 40% of the people that, that bow hunt for deer in the United States belong to Whitetails Unlimited. Really? Wow. I don't, know, I don't know how accurate that number was, but it's definitely more than the number of people that belong to trapping organizations as a percentage. Yeah, yeah. So I, don't, I don't know what they're doing with their model that works different than ours, but. I mean, even if it's, even if it was 15 or 20%, that's pretty impressive. So. That'd be pretty good. Yeah. 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 yeah the white tail hunting community is much, much larger than the trapping community. So yes. the sure number so. of people signing up, that's pretty impressive. Yep. So Brian, this is your first year as convention coordinator. So how's that going? Yeah. It's going good. It's all, there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, we're having fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, I think it's going good. Good, good. Chris, you've been active with the Virginia Trappers Association uh, yeah. with doing conventions, and you guys hosted the FTA convention uh, 2019. Yep. Which is, yeah, I've, I've been ones in the past. Yeah. And then we stole them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fur takers, that, that one, I think that's when I got hooked. I mean, I've been doing conventions since, I think I did my first convention for Virginia in 2002 or 2003. Mm -hmm. um, so I've done the state convention for quite a few years. Uh, but the fur takers really, that was, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing it and it kind of got me hooked. And when this came up, I said, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Well, yeah, how's, I, I'm, the, how's this part-time job going? So it, it's keeping me busy. <laughs> I don't know if I'd quite, I don't know if I'd call it a part-time job, maybe part-time part of the year. <laughs> so, and, and you're also, you also do the regional conventions too, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So then we just wrapped up the Western. I was supposed to be out there, but this eye kept me home. Um, and then we've got in, we've got a Northeastern this year in Maine up at Neil Olson's, uh, August 18th and 20th. Uh, and then the Southeastern's in Bland, Virginia this year, October 14th and 15th. Okay. And there, and there hasn't been one in the Northeast for quite some time. Um, At least is, 10 years. At least 10 deal. years. And it's going to be combined with Neil Olson's then? Yes. Okay. So that would, that would, would should be very well attended anyways. So it, anyways, yeah, it's, we're, we're basically just piggybacking on Neil's event. He's doing all the work it's not really a whole lot for me to do but watch the master at it so <laughs> yeah well yeah you i well I, you've been doing it a long time too so i wouldn't you know um discount what you do but you guys can compare notes for sure so but well that one's been on my bucket list i've never been up to his event and i'm glad to be going this year yeah yeah i haven't been to that one either and then um yeah it's it's on the sometime one of these years list you know so right yep same here it's a long drive from springfield Illinois. yeah 
<laughs> especially at five dollar gas. Five and a quarter. Five dollar gas. Here in Indiana, it's, it's hurting everybody this year. Yeah, yeah, and it, I don't think there's a particular end in sight on that. So, but way to bring down the podcast, Charlie. Get <laughs> <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about bringing that up. We're just trying to keep this. You want to talk about fur prices too? While you're at it? <laughs> <laughs> Hit everybody from both ends. So yeah. No. So what about uh, the nuts and bolts stuff, Brian? Are you? Um, is that going well? I think so. I guess we'll find out if the wheels stay on or not. I don't have any spare parts laying around yet. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot to it. I mean, there, I, I, if if People don't realize how much goes on behind the scenes to make one of these things come off. There's a definite lot to it. Yeah. Yeah. And the hope is they never see. Right. They see Ideally, they never see. Behind the scenes, something went yeah. wrong. Yeah. I mean, generally, you know, you might be pulling your hair out at certain points of during the convention or stressed out over something or whatever. And, and, 99.5% of the people will never know that you were exactly. going through that or, or realizing that. And that, of course, that means you're doing a good job and, and, you know, it, it just goes unnoticed. So. Yeah. That's, it's, that's the secret that things are going to go wrong. It's just making sure nobody knows, nobody notices. It just rolls on anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> yep. So what can you tell us about the, the kids cave this time around, Kent? Uh, this is a yeah. second time. This is the second time um, we decided, this was John Daniels' idea, and we decided to try this. Actually, we were gonna try it in um, 2020, and we also saw how well that worked um, when we were in Kalamazoo. So, you know, we decided to do it in Iowa. And to be honest, Iowa is a great place to start. Those folks were all behind us. Um, one of the things I've noticed about doing this kids cave now is I've been convention coordinator for the Illinois Trappers Association. I've been involved in other conventions. Considering how big this is, it's the easiest one I've ever done because everybody wants to be a part of it. Get the momentum. So vendors and association and just, you know, folks that I don't know getting hold of me saying, hey, I want to help, or uh, what if we do something like this, you know? And uh, I started doing this. I had basically, John pretty much turned me loose on it, said, you know, do whatever you want, um, which I appreciate. And I decided to start with that there had to be a few general principles. I didn't want it to cost anything for any, for any of the activities. I didn't want any parents to think, well, you know, we'll, we'll take our 16-year-old, but the, you know, the eight-year-old and the four-year-old, we can't afford to take them. I wanted everybody involved. Right. Um, I wanted everything that we do to have some sort of educational component. The other thing, and, and, and John stressed this, is that we're not doing this just for trapping. I, we want activities in, in a myriad of outdoor sports activities because you know you got somebody brings a whole family they may have kids that aren't interested in trapping right they might be interested in um you know shooting a bow or shooting a bb gun or you know a, a lot of other stuff so the idea was to incorporate a lot of different components um the other thing that from an operational standpoint is we couldn't have any one activity last too long because that would just create a lot of a lot of unhappy people because they'd have to wait in line, they may sure. not get there. So you know, my idea was for most of the things to try to keep them like to a limit of maybe about 15 minutes that the that the kid would be at any one of the activities. Now last year. So we had no idea what we're gonna what was gonna happen, right? We were hoping, we were hoping we might get 200, maybe 250 people, kids there, which you know would be would have been great. We had about um, oh, we had some demos, we had some workshops, we had some other activities. Uh, we did have some nice names that were there. We uh, 
and they they graciously agreed to help in the kids cave. Tom Randa was in the kids cave. Um, Marty Myrato was in the kids cave. So I I think those helped jumpstart this. When the dust settled, we had over 500 kids come through there. <laughs> And then along with that, you're talking probably 250, 300 adults. I mean, we didn't count them, but for every for every two or three kids, there were one or two adults, you know, sure. that came with them. I guess the biggest takeaway I had from this, in spite of the chaos, because we weren't prepared for 500 kids. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, we nobody expected that. I never heard any complaints. And I was listening for them and I was asking people and everybody thought it was a great thing. Like I said, the vendors were very um, supportive. Well, so, you know, long story short, too late for that, but for this, year, long. <laughs> for this year, we decided to anticipate maybe three times the attendance. Because you had to prepare for something, right? Sure. Um, so we're setting this up hoping to get 1,500 kids go through there in three days. And if that happens, that will be awesome. I am very excited about that. We have, um, we have kids giving demos. The youngest kid giving a demo is eight. Last year, the youngest was nine. And the kid giving the demo last year that was nine did a flat set for coyotes with an MB550 that her dad had to set because she can't set it. But I'm telling you what, she made a better flat set than I've ever made. <laughs> I was I was impressed. See that? Well, they are closer to the ground. They are closer to the ground. <laughs> and what we did last year, we had you know we had a, a beautifully dressed demo array, which was also done by kids in Iowa. Uh, Mason Barclay and Allison Ozer dressed that uh, demo area, and. When they started giving the demo, we just start, we just had the kids come right down there, not sitting in stands or sitting on chairs. They were just grouped right around the demo area. And it became more of a, I guess you'd say it became more of a conversation than somebody up there preaching. And it made the it made the kid that was doing the demo more comfortable. And it I think it allowed kids that were there uh, to do a better job of asking questions. So that format worked out pretty well. Yeah. We had, um, I mean, things just popped up off the radar. It was, it was really interesting. I had um, Alan Sayer called me with Funky Trap Tags, right? And said, and he, of course, is in Iowa. So this was a big deal for him, having the NTA there. And he said, you know, I want to do a like short demonstration seminar, whatever you want to call it, um, and have Justin Deaver do it, who's a big coon trapper out in Iowa. And I want to teach kids that maybe have never seen a dog proof what it is, how it works, how to set it, how to bait it, how to anchor it, where to put it. Just real quick, we just go over the basics. And then I want to give them four dog proofs, a setter, and a jar of bait. And I said, Alan, that's a, that's a great idea. But what if we have 100 kids show up at that? I mean, that's 400 DPs, right? And his response was, was, was perfect. He said, well, that just means we've been successful, doesn't it? And that's the sort of attitude I've been getting from, from folks about this. It's been great. Well, he had, he had 54 kids show up. Um, this year, with a little more advertising, I'm expecting the kids that show up at these seminars and... Funky Trap Tags is doing the same one again. I'm expecting it to be considerably higher. Um, we've got another one that, that's being done, and it's a combination of four people that are doing it. Jeff Haggerty is actually going to do the, the demonstration, and it's using his water trapping system, you know, with the stake and the Hags bracket at 110 or one and a half. Sure. So, and, and some lure. So, everything is staked and lured and baited so you can have these kids one of these systems and they can go out and start muskrat trapping. Um, and those kids that come up, that, that come to that one are gonna get a complete system with a one and a half and a complete system with a 110. Yeah. And, and um, 
and lure. And that's, of course, Jeff Haggerty, Hags Brackets, and uh, Jeff Dunlop, and Sarah Gomez, and um, Minnesota Trapline Products are basically providing everything that's going to be needed for that. Uh -oh. To me, that's <laughs> a kid that shows up here this year is, is going to need a bag. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, we, like I said, we got three demos. We got at least two of these how-to seminars. I'm, I'm working on a third. I don't know if it'll come to fruition, but if, if we can, we'll have one of those little seminars each day. There's at least 12 different activity tables that could be BB guns or uh, Nerf bow or, um, you know, trap setting, you know, as many different activities as we can get. Um, the Allen County um, oh, it's a Fisherman's Organization, I can't think of their name right off hand, but they are, there's a pond on there. We're going to get the pond stocked and we're going to, they're going to do like a fishing clinic. Oh, cool. You know, with, hopefully the kids actually can catch and keep fish if they wanted to. So that'll be great. They're just the basics showing kid how to, you know, how to, how to take a pole and a bobber and a sinker and a hook and how to bait it. And how to catch fish, right? Um, we'll be doing a coin scramble each day, which was a huge, huge success last year. Uh, we had so many kids that we had to break it into like four different groups. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, we're, we're making it a little more interesting. There'll be, of course, there's cash in there and candy, you know, which is kind of traditional, but we're also putting some like tokens in there. But, there'll be a prize table that you can take the token to and we'll be putting some tokens for like a free ball toss right that you can go and then i don't know most people will know what a ball toss is that'll be incorporated in this you uh you get three balls for a dollar and you throw them at a set trap and if you spring the trap you get the trap and they're usually made pretty easy for the kids to get to get the trap the uh, traps usually are sponsored by Duke Traps, so you know that's great. And it's run by the whatever the state association is that's hosting the convention. Um, we've got we had two workshops last year. We had one doing cable extensions, and we had doing sift one doing sifters. We got five different workshops this year. <laughs> uh, the cable extensions was really popular and. You know, having the dog proof traps, that's a nice thing to send them home with a cable extension. So we're doing that again. We're doing catch poles, which has been a real experience because trying to get the components has been tough. <laughs> um, I don't think there's any spring tension suits out there on Amazon. I think I've got them all. <laughs> um, we're doing, oh, Adrian Romero is doing a drawing. Um, so our um, workshop. Oh, good. He's teaching, he's teaching kids how to draw oh, like a fox head or a coon head or something like that, and then sending them home with some art materials so that you know they can play around at home. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Oh, we got a guy from Oregon. He's been very popular out there doing it. He makes these little. Um, he calls them survival kits. And, you know, they're not. They're not complicated. It basically fits in a baggie, right? You know, uh, a bag to use as a rain poncho, some basic stuff to start a fire. But he goes through how to use how to use all of it, and he's got all these stories to go with it. So the kids apparently just love it. And probably what we'll do is we'll we'll have him showing kids how to start a fire. Also, um, we'll see how well that works. We'll see don't burn the building down Tim. yes no doubt no doubt so if we we'll see smoke, out, this is all being done outside if we <laughs> see smoke from the distance we'll know that the kids camp the cave has got an issue um one of the problems that arose with this and we anticipated it last year but we didn't anticipate it to this extent you know we gave out these free uh trap baskets that were full of stuff one for a boy, one for a girl. So we use these punch tickets. And as long as you had a station punched when you turned your ticket in, you were entered into the drawing. Well, 
I'm a numbers guy, all right? And I saw this, I didn't really care about the giveaway. I mean, the giveaway was great. But what I wanted out of the information is I wanted to know whether it was, you know, you had to have the kid's name and address, contact information. We had to know whether it was a boy and we wanted to know what age they were. So that gave me some breakdown of what we're dealing with here. And surprisingly enough, the app, almost 40% of the kids that came through there were girls. That surprised me. I thought it would be lower than that. But I think that just means that we were successful in attracting families. They just brought everybody. Yeah. Um, but the average age of the boys was nine. The average age of the girls was nine and a half. Hmm. Um, actually, I say average, that was the median age. You know, so half of them were on one side, half of them were on the other. That really surprised me. I expected the age to be a lot older, like 11, 12. So that gives the dilemma of you've got this kid's cave and you've got to have experiences in there for everybody from three to 17 which is a wide range. <laughs> yeah. So my wife, who's involved in this and loves kids, basically took over making this like kids activity center. And I say it's for small kids, but it didn't always work out that way. She's got games and all kinds of matching and you know, even coloring books, all, sort, all sorts of stuff. There's probably a dozen different things there to keep these. Supposedly the idea was younger kids occupied. And we're setting this up, and I got um, I got a knock on the door Tuesday. And I don't know if you guys know who Scott McCauley is. He's the MTA director for Wisconsin. And he always sets up two tables at the MTA. And with the exception of a little corner that has membership stuff regarding the Wisconsin Trappers Association, it's all stuff for kids. And he said, this is stupid. He's setting up in, in one of the buildings. I'd like to set up in the kids camp or kids cave. And I said, well, that's a great idea. We'll just incorporate you with the stuff that my wife is doing. And that just expands the number of things for these, these smaller kids to do. That worked out really well. And we're doing it again this year. I just have been amazed at all the stuff that comes together. We kind of start this with a committee and it, it's, it's obviously something that's going to evolve each year because you have to have people from, that are on the ground. So I needed people in Ohio in order to be able to pull this off. It's not going to happen otherwise. So it'll start with like me and John and a couple other people, Linda White's involved, for example. And we'll just start like in December with doing some conference calls and talking about stuff. And then as we run into or think of people that can contribute, we would at, we'll ask them to be on the conference call also. So it ended up being this great, almost crowdsourcing type um, concept of what we can do and what's available. You need know, you know, people in Ohio that know what's available from the Ohio DNR, such as uh, Nerf bow range or BB gun range. See, I don't know any of that stuff. I don't have somebody there, I'm lost. Uh, we got a grant from the Ohio Division of Wildlife, who I can't say enough good things about, that's going to allow us to buy some infrastructure stuff this year. So we don't have to worry about trying to raise money to do that, like a sound system, and, you know, just stuff like tablecloths and electrical cords and, you know, all of this good stuff so that we can take from convention to convention. So that solved that problem. Um, that's if, awesome. If we can pull this off, it's going to be something. I'm telling you. If I don't care whether you've got kids or not, you need to take a minute if you're at the convention and just step in. Last year it was this barely organized chaos. And I'm I'm thinking that's kind of what it's going to be this year, too. <laughs> well, I gotta say we got we got we stopped in several times, uh two or three times, because your the kids' cave was not that far from where we were set up. And I think there was more activity in the kids' cave than there was in any other building on the on the grounds consistently. You know, I would agree with that, I and mean, I heard that a lot. 
Yeah. Um, the other thing that I'm trying to do is um, I didn't want to have too many things set up with specific times because I didn't want kid, I didn't want a family to get there at noon and find out that the stuff that they wanted to see was, well, that one was done at nine and one was done at 10 and one, you know, so we're, we're trying to do these workshops <laughs> in kind of a free flowing kind of thing. You know, you get, you get kids that are there that, that want to make catch poles, you just start making catch poles. And then when they're done, you get, you get new ones. Um, okay. That worked out fairly well last year. I'm not sure if the economies of scale will do anything to us about that this year, but we're going to give it a shot. Yeah. Because I want, I don't want kids not to, I don't want them, I don't want them disappointed. I don't want them to get there. You know, they can only come on Saturday and everything they wanted to do was on Thursday and Friday. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will say it's a convention within a convention. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you a quick story about that little pond that's on that fairgrounds. When we were there in 2013, Jake was, I don't know, 13 or 14. And, and they said they had it stocked and they were going to have like a kid's fishing thing there. So same people. Yeah. So we ran to, to Walmart and he bought a fishing pole. We got a fishing pole. And, and I remember him catching a catfish that was pretty nice <laughs> catfish <laughs> in that pond. So. <laughs> So um, um, now he's approaching 30 and hoping to do it again. <laughs> well, he's over, the, he's over the age range. This yeah, year. yeah, he's over the age range now. <laughs> he's not approaching. Well, he's mid-20s now. So, yeah. <laughs> so. But Brian has been, you know, for a guy that's the first time that he's been involved in this, um, he has been great to work with. I have really enjoyed working with him. You know, well, he, he sits in on all the conference calls. He has a lot to add, um, and he never, I never get from him, well, we can't do that. It's always, we'll, we'll try to figure out a way to do it, and I appreciate that. Well, they, they hosted the uh, FTA, like I said, uh, in 2019, and that was, and they did an excellent job with that convention. Mm, that that's was, what I heard. I didn't go. But. It was... Um, it was it was very good. It was it was, <laughs> and there was a lot of skepticism, as I recall, about having that in Virginia <laughs> to go to go that far east. Yeah, yep, yeah, but so, they they did an excellent job. So for those that missed that convention, you missed a very good one. It was a it was a very good convention. So, mm -hmm. so Brian, you mentioned um, you know some of the things going on, and I heard the president's dinner deal that will be. Friday. What's anything going on Saturday evening? Is there music or? No, right now we don't have any music planned for Saturday evening. So um, really nothing after about, three, you know, we've got uh, just d demos all day. I don't have anything on the schedule after Saturday, 4 p.m. Should talk to Justin. He's tied in with the music folks. I know, I, mean, I see that. What can you hook us up with, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might know a lot of people, but it what gets them there is the money. That's what it yeah. <laughs> it, Some of them are will do, you know, a nice fair deal, cheap deal, and some with you know for people to fans to travel and stuff. It's just crazy, right? So I mean, I get it. They definitely need paid for what they do. But my gosh, it's it's tough for a traveling artist. So. But yeah, that, we had yeah, that'd be great to get some music out there. I, I haven't given up on it yet, but it's not, it's we had nothing fancy in Harrisonburg and that went over pretty good Saturday evening, but I don't know if we're gonna have anybody there this year or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I here's here's a this is a side note that's kind of kind of related and mostly not. Um at our uh 7B rendezvous that we have every fall. In uh, 2019, Justin hooked us up with the entertainment. We always try to have a musical entertainment at lunch. So he hooked us up with uh, Sierra Farrell. Farrell. And um, people were like, holy cow, when they, when they <laughs> heard her. So now she's um, performed on um, everything, Grand Ole Opry. 
Um, I mean, she so she went from this very un, not very well known person to and playing at a trappers event uh, to being you know pretty much on her way to the you know. So she's gonna win a Grammy. Put it that way. Yeah. She's signing uh, around the records, playing the Opry's, all the big major festivals, making songs with Ray LaMontagne and bluegrass legends to folk legends and just. It's crazy. So well, she'll remember Trappers. She might cut us a break. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the problem, I mean, Justin can elaborate on this more, but once they get in with a, a management group, it's like yeah, breaking yeah. that wall to... to... You, you could ask her all day long. She's like, yeah, I'll play it. You got to just tell my management to get them signed up for it, and that's where it falls apart. <laughs> so brian maybe next year you can talk to justin and get somebody lined up for the for next year's convention so there we go there we go yeah it's in next year it's going to be in um back up in michigan back in escanaba yep yeah up in the up yep. in michigan which that's a, that's a good fun convention as well uh definitely a, a tourist uh destination and so yeah that's a very supportive supportive community uh, yes of course you know you don't always get that I, I remember Hamburg was not particularly enamored of having a trapping convention, but um, uh, New York. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, you compared, compared to somebody, someplace like Escanaba or, or Iowa last year, I mean, they just don't have the outdoor people there. When or, you drive into, when you drive into Escanaba, there, a number of the signs say, welcome trappers, welcome yeah, MTA, yeah. you know, and that that's not something you see on that many signs typically on a host city or host town, you know, for the NTA convention. So I remember last time though the convention, uh, uh, the NTA convention was in Lima. Of course, that was 2013, and we were at the peak of fur prices, and the attendance was over the top. They actually had a one of those digital signs out on them, whatever interstate that is that you had to get off of to go to Lima. Uh, about the NTA convention, which exit to use or whatever. So I thought that was pretty impressive. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, a lot of that either. I'm sorry? A lot of that kind of depends on the, uh, the association, whatever the state association is. Um, and Ohio's good. And the folks in Escanaba will be, they do a lot of their own advertising too, or yeah. work at getting advertising out. And of course, that's something Brian's diving into this year. Um, but I'm not sure you had a whole lot to do with that in Virginia, but um, we're hoping to do a little bit of, I, I won't say out of the box, but, you know, some stuff that we haven't done much before. Right, Brian? Yep, and it's just about time to roll that out, so. <laughs> you know, there's no point in doing a lot of this more than three or four weeks out because, yeah. Unless it's stuff that, like, like when we're advertising for the kids' cave in the convention, we do that in the um, um, the May June edition to give people time to um, to get everything set, you know, get the vacation set and everything. You know, you want to give people three months maybe in order to be able to to set their vacations and decide where they go. But that's that's with people that or in our community. If you're, if you're dealing with people that are just locals, you, you try to do it too far out and you just, they'll be interested, but then they just set it aside and forget about it. Yeah. So right. you try, to, try to do stuff a little more timely. Oh, I hate talking about, talking about the, the um, kids cave. So do you have any um, uh, celebrity names that are gonna help with that? Not so far this year. Um, I was kind of disappointed in that. I was hoping, I was hoping like Marty Myrata would be back. We did a um, one of the most popular things there was um, one of the simplest. It was just like a mountain man dress up. Yeah, <laughs> get and, your picture with him, and get your picture, get your picture against the backdrop. Um, but Marty agreed to help with that, and he and his daughter had a blast with it. Um, he stayed there, you know, we're hoping to have him there a couple hours a day. Well, he was there for four hours a day. 
because he was having fun too. Right. Um, and then one of the contestants from Alone was there. Yes, Rosanna Barr. Yeah. And, and she had a good time too. Yeah. Um, she thanked us, thanked us for letting her come in and do it because um, she liked being with all the kids. Again, like I said, it, it, everybody wants to help. It's it's a great thing as a coordinator because you can draw on a lot of resources. The one thing I will make a pitch for is it's going to take this. This is all hands-on stuff with kids, right? So you need a lot of supervision. It's going to take a lot of volunteers to pull this off. We're figuring we're going to need at least 50 a day. Um, so anybody that's interested in uh, in helping, please get hold of me. My name's uh, with the I'm the uh, Illinois director for the NTA, so you can get my uh, my contact information off the NTA website. Or just message me this podcast. I'll send them that. Back. That would be that perfect. Was, that's fine too. That would be perfect. And I'm wanting people, we've got people that are helping for an hour or two, all the way up to people that are helping set up, be there all three days and help tear down. And I want every one of them. Uh, there'll be something for anybody that wants to do something. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be for like a whole day. Yeah. I appreciate it. One, one thing, you, this is a kind of off subject, but when you're walking around an NTA convention, you might run into somebody from Australia or Alaska, or mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's people that travel long distances to, to come to an NTA convention. You know, it's kind of, um, uh, it's interesting when you, if you're standing in line at a food truck or whatever, and you just talk, start talking to somebody and it's like, find out where they're from. And, and um, so it, that's always pretty cool to, because we're all there, uh, we all have that common interest of trapping in, in the outdoors and, and um, just this, um, you know, it's, it's just the, the people that are, you can, you can certainly have a conversation with because you all have, you all have that in common, you know, so. I talked yeah. to an Australian couple at one of the demos, one of the coyote demos a few years back, I don't remember which one, which convention. And, you know, we basically, after the, demo was over we're sitting there comparing techniques catching coyotes versus dingoes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and there's not a whole lot of difference to be honest i i would no, say canine. not canines are canines right dogs yeah. are dogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the state well that's the standard line of from somebody that doesn't know is like if, if my farm dog's running around and you're trapping coyotes will my dog stay away from the set it's like well probably not so <laughs> probably not <laughs> <laughs> probably is a really nice way to put it because almost assuredly not <laughs> <laughs> farm yeah, dogs yeah. are every bit of but you know it's funny of course everybody says let's watch your dog if you want to know how coyotes work right yeah because they're very territorial yeah. Dogs. So anything that any canine that's in their area, man, they are all over it, right? So, got any concluders, Charlie? Before we wrap this up, well, we'll give these guys that same opportunity. But I, I just, yeah, I always look forward to, to the trappers conventions and the NTA convention, and you know, it's people. If you go for a number of years, it's people that you only see maybe at that time of year. Um, obviously you're going to be able to see the newest and latest equipment and be able to shop from, like you said, a hundred vendors and all the tailgaters. And there's, um, all any, any trapping resource out there in terms of a demo is, is well represented. And, and, um, I just can't say enough good things about attending the, um, uh, trapping convention and, and uh, the NTA convention. It's just, it's, uh, definitely highlight one of the highlights of the summer for sure so it really is a community uh, yeah which is pretty neat yeah yeah agreed it's uh you know the, the president's um dinner last year was super well attended everybody was packed into that giant room and that was right. that was a lot of fun and you know so it was um, um good memories and i and i've been the first nta i went to was back in 70, whatever year it was, well, it was actually a joint convention, NTFTA. 
and I was still in high school and that, I mean, I still remember that convention. That was some of the, that's the best memories of going to a convention was that one, you know, I guess at this point, basically almost 40 years ago. So, um, <laughs> that was great memories and, and, uh, typically people that attend a convention and NBA convention or whatever, are going to make sure that they get back to another one, you know, so. Uh, yeah. It is, it is a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot to do. I mean, it takes, it takes three days to go through the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it really is the people. I mean, that's, fur prices are low and gas is high, but the people you meet there and you get to hang around with and befriend, you, you, you can't do that anywhere else. And right. like Charlie said, you only get maybe one or two chances a year to see a lot of those people. So are you going to let a little bit of money for the gas keep you home? I don't, I hope not. I hope everybody comes out and we have a great show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going up and down Interstate 65, it doesn't look like there's any uh, concern <laughs> about what people. <laughs> what I was people running late tonight because I was sitting in traffic, so they didn't <laughs> mind running gas today. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So, any, any last thing you guys want to add? Well, I sure would like everybody to stick their head in the kids' cave. Um, this has just been such a, an overwhelming response to this. And to me, it's exactly what we need. You know, we all want to get kids. We want to get, we want to get people that have an outdoor interest to hang around trappers, right? I mean, and if we can get them when they're three and four and five and six and seven, I mean, that's even better. Right. Um, I do want to, I want to, one little story you know you would think people that are making dirt sifters you would expect that to be boys you know maybe 10 11 12 right the most fervent worker in making a dirt sifter last year that i saw was a three-year-old girl <laughs> and we hadn't we didn't have time to pre-drill the holes so <laughs> we're drilling the holes you're screwing the holes in you're stapling the wire on, right? Would she let you do any of that for her? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> now we had power tools, but she couldn't, she she was so little, she couldn't hold and balance the power tools by herself. I had to balance like the screw, like the screwdriver, you know, the drill, right. all of that, so that she could do it. But she had to have her finger on the trigger. <laughs> And she was so proud of that sister after she got done. And her mom was just ecstatic. They had originally come for one day. They ended up extending their stay for all three days. <laughs> and that's what we wanted, right? I mean, that's yeah. what we're looking for. That's great. Yeah. Brian, you got anything you want to add? Well, just don't just come bring somebody with you, but, but make the trip and we're going to have a good time. Yeah. That's a very good point. Bring somebody with you. Yeah. yeah. Bring somebody with you. Yeah. 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 And if you are concerned about gas prices, carpool. Yeah. Bring two or three guys and split the gas and then it's not so bad. So <laughs> there you go. There you, there you go. go. Uh, yeah, it, I'm with everyone on all these topics. I just want to say thanks to you guys for what you do and all that stuff behind the scenes. Uh, we volunteer a lot of time too in other areas, uh, so we kind of know how it works. So appreciate your hard work. And uh, it takes, it, you know, no man's an island in any of this stuff. It takes a whole group of no. people. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Well, looking forward to seeing you. We'll be here yep. before we know right it. Here. Yep, just a couple of weeks. Looking forward to seeing you guys. <laughs>